Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. It's November now and this tour is a little bit delayed. We have had constant rain since I last showed you around and we've tried to film a video about three times. Each time we've got outside and then it started bolting down so we've had to go back in again. So fingers crossed we'll be able to show you around today. We've had a really nice sunny weekend. Um, but the weird thing is at the moment it's been abnormally warm so we've still had a lot of growth around the garden and we are getting into the time of year where I'd like to be tidying things away, cutting back my dahlia um, putting some mulch down but with this warm weather um, things haven't quite died back we've had lots of weeds germinating because of the heat and it's been a little bit unclear as to what to do so we're somewhere halfway I have started clearing I'll show you around as we go but I thought we could start here because I've got a few things that I've been working on that I can show you so behind me we've got our strawberry bed and you can see that our wisteria is starting to turn a lovely yellow colour which is really really pretty same with the strawberries the leaves are starting to go really lovely yellow but I have been planting bulbs here so I've put in some daffodils I think I put three different types in and some crocuses as well so we should have some flowers in this bed uh, really early in kind of February time hopefully if the crocuses were in early enough uh, followed by daffodils in spring so that should add a little bit of floral interest to this area because um, apart from this clematis here, which looks absolutely stunning in spring, there's not actually a lot of flowers going on here. Um, it's a little bit too early for the origeron as well. So that should give us something to look forward to in spring. And I have done a little bit of tidying on this clematis, but it's still a young plant. I think it's uh, three years old. So next year I'll be doing a lot more than I will be at the moment. Tidied up the herbs a little bit. But apart from that, uh, I think we're ready to go up the garden and I can show you around some of the other areas. One thing I wanted to show you while we're in the lower part of the garden is the pond and we don't show you the pond very much because we thought it had a leak um, and it hasn't been this full in ages but with all the rain we've been having it's full almost to the top. I think it won't get any fuller than that so we'll see what happens. I don't imagine the leak has miraculously fixed, it's fixed itself. It's probably to do with the ground being so full of water it can't take anymore but it's nice because this is what we were aiming for with the pond um, and we did actually plan to remove it and reline the plastic and then put all the rocks back eventually um, but that's something on our long-term to-do list but this is what we will be working towards when that does happen um, I guess fingers crossed it stays this full but probably not going to happen um, but it looks nice while it's like this and you can imagine um, the potential that we can do with this area I'm really keen to add some water lilies so that we have some flowers in there in the spring um, and obviously we've got a bit of space around the edge to plant some um, bordering plants as well I do actually have a um, gunnera plant that I want to put under this tree. I'm not quite sure if there is space for it because they do get absolutely huge. It's not the invasive kind, don't worry, but even so they still get really big. So that will be something to do um, once we start working on the pond, but I just wanted to show you it because it looks really nice. Um, now I'll show you some of the borders in the rest of the garden. One thing I really like about this part of the garden this time of year is the autumn colour. So to the side of me here, we've got loads of yellows in um, the hedges and then the hydrangeas are going a really nice kind of dusky pink green colour as well. Um, it's only this one that's doing it. The others have all sort of singed a little bit. I think perhaps because they're young plants, um, they're not quite established yet, but maybe next year those will look better. There's not an awful lot to report on in this area. I finished putting the crocus bulbs in the ground. Um, I just wanted to make sure I'm getting rid of the gaps so that when we have the crocus lawn flowering in spring, it looks very full and um, even coverage. Um, but yeah, the only thing really in this area is to just admire some of the colours and uh, see how things are changing as they start to die back for the winter. So let's go further up the garden now and I'll show you around. You can hear the ducks behind me, um, they're in flock down now, which means they have to go into their enclosure um, over the winter while the risk of bird flu is high. Um, they don't love it. They're okay though, they're quite settled this year. They tend to go a bit tired in the winter um, after they've molted and the days get shorter. Uh, and they're not too bothered actually about being in there this year, so that's good. But we do want to get them back in the garden as soon as we can. But if you hear them quacking, it's because they get excited when they see us. Um, so that's what they're doing behind me. But I wanted to show you um, our hellebore bed. Um, 
and I put these hellebores in, I think about two videos ago, possibly in the last video, um, and these were um, bought for us by our Patreon, so thank you so much to everyone who's joined that. You've allowed us to get some really lovely winter interest in the garden and I can't wait to see them flowering. And because it's been so warm, they have started flowering already, so I can see two buds on there now. Um, those will be flowering very soon. But in my experience, this is really early. We don't tend to see these flowering until like February kind of time, maybe January if we're lucky. But um, I'm wondering whether these sorts of things will flower all the way through now. We'll see. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven hellebores in here at the moment. Two of them are nice big established ones that I bought from someone's uh, secondhand sale on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, and they're lovely, they're a beautiful pink color. Can't wait to see those. And then the rest are a surprise because they were mixed, but they are already, they're producing so much new foliage and they look like they love this area. They get a really, really nice leaf mulch from the trees and that's falling down now. That will take care of um, putting some nutrients in the soil for them. And then after that, they get lots of nice sunlight in the early months of the year as well so I think they'll be happy here and uh, they look really good so far I just can't wait to see what happens with those and you can look forward to seeing them probably in our next video at this rate so honestly I don't love showing you this area of the garden because it's still very much a work in progress but I did want to show you this um, winter flowering clematis that has started flowering and these flowers are so pretty they look a lot like um, hellebores this one's called freckles um, and you can see why it gets that name it's got these tiny pink dots inside the flowers and this should flower through from November all the way into February um, it's got some more buds on there as well but that's just amazing I, I can't wait to see this grow and cover this trellis it's so pretty and such a valuable thing to have in the garden this time of year when nothing else is doing anything um, but it looks really healthy and the similar story I think it's enjoying the leaf mulch that it gets from these plum trees and this oak tree uh, and we leave the leaves here to compost down and feed the soil so things like this really love that um, and then underneath me we've got one flower on our Japanese anemones and I'm still happy to see this so this one's called wild swan and again, these were um, bought by our Patreon subscribers. So thank you so much to those of you who have subscribed and got these to add some autumn interest to the garden. It's a bit late for them to be flowering, but I think it's because it's their first year in the ground. And the idea is that we're gonna fill this bed with Japanese anemones so that we've got some autumn flowers. Going down the line, we'll have lots of flowers down here with the anemones. And then as those die over, the winter flowering clematis will start to flower as well. So we actually have um, three winter flowering clematis, but this is the only one that's really, really taken off so far. And I think it's because this one I bought from the garden center and it was a bit more expensive. Um, I think it was around 25 pounds. I'd be used to spending maybe 10, 15 on clematis, um, possibly even three for 10 pounds if you get the really small nine centimeter pot but I thought I'll splash out and see if it's worth it and it did have a really good root system on it already and it's massive and it's only been in the ground less than a year so uh, sometimes I think it does go to um, show that buying the more expensive plants can be worth it if you have the option um, but yeah really pleased to see that uh, and then in front of me we've got the dahlias and I need to dig these out, but they haven't gone over yet. And I keep seeing these buds and thinking, oh, I'll just get a few more flowers from them. Um, so I don't know. I, I mean, they do need to come out soon because I'll be putting my tulip bulbs in here. And I have ordered those now. So in my next video, I'm going to do some bulb unboxing and planting with you. I have already done one bulb unboxing video. So I'll link to that if you want to have a look. But we will be doing another one soon. So stay tuned for that. And we'll be going through the tulips, which is one of my favorite things to do. So here is the oak tree, which is currently starting to go yellow and drop its leaves. Um, we've also got this acer tree, which is really, really green. Last autumn, this one went red in around November time so it shouldn't be too long I think it was end of November so it'll maybe be a couple of weeks but I do wonder if it's been slowed down by how warm it's been the last couple of weeks it's been really really weird um, we're kind of like in an in-between stage where some things are accepting that it's autumn and doing their thing and other things are sort of getting stuck or just putting on more growth because of how warm it is um, but the oak tree is giving us really nice leaves I'm not quite at the point where I'll start clearing these yet um, but if it does start to rain, I might move them off so they don't go sludgy. Um, and then in the borders, I've started tidying these up. Um, and I know people say if you can avoid tidying them, it's better for the wildlife. But two reasons we've tidied. The first is because we've got the leaf mulch um, and the bugs will be happy in there anyway. So that's good. And then the second reason is because I've been doing tulip bulbs and I finished those now. So I think I've done about 
400 across the borders um, and they're a mix of pinks and whites and softer colours to hopefully mute the tone of these in spring. Um, I'll link to my spring video if you want to see what they look like already with the perennial tulips that we've got in there but they're very like hot and fiery colours so hopefully going to mute those down this spring um, and I'm really looking forward to it and because it's been so warm a lot of the bulbs that we've got in the ground already are appearing so early so I can see we've got some Dutch irises that are already about 15 centimeters tall poking through the ground and the most bizarre thing is that we've got muscari that's already in flower and that shouldn't be flowering until February March kind of time but it's down there it's flowering so who knows what's going to happen with that very weird um, but we'll see I don't think it will flower again but maybe I could be wrong about that but yeah I have been tidying so this area um, is a little bit empty at the moment but it's a good thing to feel like you're getting on top of the tidying. Um, so let's go further towards the polytunnel and I can show you our raspberries and some of the vegetables that we're going to be growing over the winter. So I mentioned earlier that the mild weather has been making the weeds um, pop up absolutely everywhere and I've done so much weeding here. It's the most I've ever done this time of year, especially in this area under our raspberry canes. But now that I'm on top of that, I've started tidying things up. So um, I've cut back a lot of the trees that are behind the greenhouse and I'm getting ready to clean. Um, we've got two greenhouses and a polytunnel and I'll be getting ready to clean those over winter, probably in our next garden tour. I'll either be doing that or will have done it. Um, the polytunnel needs it especially. I spent a good few hours with a handsaw um, cutting off a lot of branches on the trees um, and there was a lot more than I expected but it has let a lot of light in there now so that's really really useful um, especially for overwintering things and then on this side I've trained the raspberry canes in hoops which is what I usually like to do. Um, it's been a bit harder this year because the new shoots have popped up from all over the place. Last year they were in really nice neat little dense bunches and I could grab them all together and put them in hoops but they are a bit all over the place so we've got kind of three rough hoops going on here but it's a bit abstract so um, that's what it is and then um, underneath here we've still got all of our tulips and crocuses left in from last year and they should all come back hopefully fingers crossed um, and then I've got a few things in the greenhouse that I'm going to show you um, I've tidied up in here because it did get really overgrown um, in summer it's really hard to keep on top of things in a garden this size when you're just one person bits do get messy and it's inevitable and the greenhouse really suffered this year but now I'm on top of it. Um, most of the things in here I've got are cuttings um, that I've taken in autumn and I've got a few seedlings as well. So these are the sweet pea seedlings that I'm going to try and overwinter in there. They're looking on the leggier side, um, I think because it's been so warm, ideally these would be a bit shorter. So I'm probably going to have to pot them on so that they've got bigger space for their roots, maybe sink the stems in a bit so they're less long. Um, but I don't know what this winter is going to be like, we'll see if they survive, but um, these are from home saved seed anyway. I'm trying to get better at saving my own seed so I don't rely on buying it. Um, so it's more just for fun, we'll see how those go. And then um, in the bed in the greenhouse, I've planted some shallots and some overwintering cabbages as well. So here we are in the vegetable garden and same thing, I've started tidying. So asparagus is cut down and I've added a nice thick layer of mulch onto these beds. Um, and the asparagus is underplanted with strawberries and I'm not fussed about keeping the strawberries because we have so many. So I'm just going to add a really nice thick mulch. If the strawberries make it through, then great, but I'm not bothered if they don't. Um, perennial onions are looking really good. I have been struggling a little bit with black fly and I think because it's been so warm they've been able to breed and there's been quite a lot of them on here so I have actually come out with a bit of neem oil and um, sprayed the plants with neem oil which seems to help. I lost my sun chokes in um, we had some really really windy days while it was raining and they just completely snapped to the ground and I was really looking forward to seeing those flower because it was the first year we've grown them um, so unfortunately nothing's happened in that bed but I have planted my elephant garlic now so underneath the ground that bed's full of garlic although it doesn't look like much now in the coming months we'll start to see that popping up and it should look more interesting um, and we've also got our turnips doing really well in that bed uh, and our globe artichoke is doing well too and then the nasturtiums they're still going crazy I'll let them self-seed but they do spread really easily here so next year we'll probably have quite a few of those but they've really been loving this mild weather and they haven't um, gone over as you might expect for November so we have a lot of nasturtiums um, we don't actually eat them I know you can but maybe we should try that um, given that we've got so many and they do so well here in the orchard I've been trying to pull up the ivy from the ground but there's an area of about um, 
probably six meters long by four meters wide that's completely matted in ivy on the ground and I'm just tackling it bit by bit and my friend's been helping me um, it's not something we're going to get on top of this year but we just want to make sure it doesn't get worse um, and if anything see if we can chip away at it bit by bit um, just so that it doesn't completely take over that area but the trees are all losing their leaves now um, I will give it one last mow I think to try and get the grass even just so that when our spring bulbs come up in the spring they won't be like overshadowed by long grass because that happened last year um, so when it's dry enough I'll try and get the mower up here but we really haven't much, had much luck with things being dry. I think that's more or less everything to show you for November's tour in the garden hope you've liked having a look around and make sure you stay tuned if you're interested in getting some bulbs in the ground and doing an unboxing as well thanks so much for being here and if you enjoy the videos please give us a subscribe and we'll see you next time.